So uh, he was the one in line uh, next when I made that last second decision to pull out uh, who stepped up and here he is in the final. I'm excited to see he's had just been getting through in each of his heats. You can tell he's getting a little bit better of a rhythm. So hopefully uh, he's able to really connect all the dots and put on a performance. But with him, Billy Kemper, I'd say has been the standout of the uh, event so far. As well as Trevor Carlson. He's going to be out there in the blue jersey rounding out our final. You can see all of our finalists on the screen. So back to you, Greg. Your pick for the final. We like to do it right at the beginning of the final. Give me a surfer. Tom Lowe. Tom Lowe. I like it. Our top local performers here. He's down with Kale. Kaipo, thank you very much. I'm down here with Oscar Moncada. Oscar, a tough heat. You were mentioning that there's a lot of current, a little bit more than usual. I think it's absolutely incredible that Jamie Mitchell has advanced through two heats, let alone just paddle out, laying on his chest. That man in the yellow jersey, you can see him on the back of the PWC, the jet ski, has a fractured sternum right now, which he which happened just a couple weeks ago right here. We can stay social. Look into Instagram. Here's Jamie Mitchell just a couple weeks ago getting carted into the back of an ambulance, Greg, with that fractured sternum. So I'm just talking about a human story with Jamie Mitchell. This to me is absolutely incredible. Yeah, so what happened is he took off on a wave, you know, not unlike that one that he just dropped in on and uh, pulled into a barrel, nothing out of the ordinary, but somewhere in that underwater wipeout, the tail of his board turned back around and hit him directly in the chest. Here it is, right here. Nothing that you haven't seen 20 times over today, but underneath the water there, the unpredictability, he took the board right in the chest. You could see it bleeding right there. And as he said, he came up that he couldn't breathe, he couldn't yell for help, he couldn't even raise his arm. Playing through the pain. We've heard it before, but that's exactly what J.B. Richard really is doing. As we see Kai Lenny packing a big barrel there. Knife that drop, and found himself in a big tube. Didn't find his way out, but great job with just getting barreled. Great set right here, and right behind him, it looks like Jamie Mitchell backing him up. What is he's he? He's going to run into a bit of foam from Kai's wave, and ooh, he hits the eject button. To find his way into the barrel, we're going to take another look at these two rides. So Jamie's Mitchell came right on the back of Kai's. You can see all that foam. That was the residual of Kai's wave, which was a bit bigger. And uh, this is it here. Beautiful drop, back door looking, putting, and just a giant cavern. And that wave bent back on itself too much, so he couldn't find an exit. And down the beach somewhere, Tom Lowe had snuck into this one, and he took a massive hit right there. A little bit of an ugly wave, and he couldn't set the edge on his board. And you could see at the last second, he tried to redirect to straighten out to get in front of the lip. But if you're too late, there's nothing you can do to outrun it. And he took that brunt of the force of that right on the head. And here we go, live action. Trevor Carlson up, and... Injection off of the board. So Trevor, having sitting idle there for a while, saw an opportunity for a small corner on that one, but uh, decided to hit the eject button, which was real smart. And Kai Lenny backing up his one wave here comes a little late and ducks underneath that lip as well, covering his head for that explosion. Out of harm's way. Let's yeah, take a look at Trevor first. Trevor did the same thing as well. You could see coming around that he was too late to get around the section. It wasn't going to barrel, so he just jumps. And when you do that feet first dive like that uh, on a smaller wave, you can usually penetrate and get out the back. And uh, Kai doing something very similar on his. He went, rather than setting a line across the wave, went down to the bottom of it, hoping that he would uh, be able to pull up underneath the barrel. And as he did that, he realized he was a half a second too late. But um, and as well, Billy Kemper picking off a wave in that exchange, pumping down the line, pulling into a barrel, but just tough with this onshore condition to uh, get one of those to stay clean and open. So you've got the best personal watercraft operators on these skis navigating their way back out, guys with years of experience, and it's still taking them a good four or five minutes. But while we were talking there, that was Jamie Mitchell in yellow found an incredible wave. Oh my. And was so close to finding an exit there. Mitchell in beautiful, incredible. beautiful bottom turn, pulls up, sets a great line through that. And again, offshore, he was coming out of that, but 
it just went a little too fast yet again, but that's going to be a great score to get him going. He has a 3.10 and a 1.67, so he's definitely going to improve upon that. Greg, I'm baffled how Jamie Mitchell even was able to lay down on his surfboard for that opening heat. I would have never anticipated him making it all the way to the final, let alone take the lead with a score of a 7.77 dropping for Mitchell. Mitchell in the yellow now is our finals leader heading into the final 20 minutes here at the Puerto Escondido Challenge. I honestly think that when this guy's back is up against the wall, that's when he actually just hones in, focuses, and shines through to be able to go back out after how many waves, how many hits, getting washed to the beach with a broken sternum and doing it all over again. I, I'm just blown away. I agree with you. Beyond the surfing story, this is an athlete story of someone who has risen above some physical limitations. Fractured chest plate, and here we go to live action. Kai Lenny, currently in second place, looking for some opportunity. He's gonna complete this ride as he moves his way down the line. A 5.99 is what Lenny needs to retake the lead from Jamie Mitchell. He completed his ride, nothing spectacular. We'll see where the judges go with that ride. But for you, Greg Long, I'd be surprised if that pushes him up, but no discredit. You know, that was a beautiful late drop. Comes right around the corner, just in front of the lip. And you can see he's looking here. Sometimes you'll get a bonus section where that second peak you'll connect to and can barrel off, but that one just got a little weird, so he was smart to kick out there. Now, Billy Kemper had the first wave of that set, which, great drop, but a couple feet too deep. And as I keep saying, that is all the difference in the world out here. Starting off early, this is Kai Lenny's best wave. A massive barrel there, standing up tall. Fortunately, no exit to him. Tom Lowe took a huge hit here in the opening minutes as well. Jamie Mitchell started early with a couple of questionable waves, but he followed that up with a great barrel we're seeing right here. One big pump up into it, a second one, and just made it all the way to the end before getting clipped off. Billy Kemper has been a little absent out of the flow that we've seen previous uh, heats there. A couple of big straight handers. And here we are. And, and White, Alex Botello's first wave. Alex finally is going to get on the board there. And uh, did a good job of getting under the lip and pulling into the barrel. Right behind him, a scratching. Here we go. Tom Lowe. The goofy foot from Great Britain. Uh, but he's just been a resident here at Puerto Escondido. And he negotiates a steep drop, gets ahead of that spin section, and kicks out in one piece. But when you've got a big piece of equipment like that underneath you, it's really hard to bleed any speed. So you see beautiful early entrance, but he's just in front of the barrel the whole time. Got that big vacuum spit coming out behind him. And a nice wave. That maybe his best of the heat so far. Get him a little bit closer up to uh, that top position, just looking for a better backup now. A day there for the ladies and for the men, August 11th in Tahiti, Chopo, uh, for that next men's championship tour event. But to live action, and Kai Lenny is go. feeling it, threading it through. Oh, front flip! Could he steal the thunder? From Jamie Mitchell, 599 is the requirement for Kai Lenny, and I, I, he may have just died. I think he paddled into that wave. Yeah, beautiful entrance into it. Square barrel standing up. Oh, beautiful. Wow. Perfectly ridden. Incredible dismount. <laughs> from up above, let's take a look at this huge wave, huge barrel. A perfect execution by Kylan. Yeah, we're going to see an excellent score come out of here. But back to what I was about to point out. All the other surfers, really quick here, the slow motion from the front angle. Sets his line perfect. A little bit of a style soul arch. He knows he's in the spot. Gets down low. And he's expecting that lift, little chandelier section, but he had already found his way out of it. And just for the crowd, a full front flip. 
Yeah, a little leggy on the landing, but I don't think the judges are going to hold it against them there. Now, there's no priority rule because it's very difficult in a big wave lineup. This is the gentleman's rule that I, I was talking it. about and the respect and camaraderie that exists amongst these surfers that any one of them could have turned around and hassled, especially Jamie Mitchell. If you look when he's paddling in, Jamie is over his shoulder deeper than Kai, but Jamie had just re-entered the lineup. It was Kai's wave, and they knew it. He'd been sitting patiently and waiting for it, and yeah, that's what I love about big wave surfing. It's a competition, but gosh, you know, the, the friendship above everything else is what really counts, and it shines through in that moment right there. I love that we don't need priority cubes when we have this gentleman surfing right now as far as priority, and that really illustrates the brotherhood that is with big, uh, with our big wave tour. But right now, let's celebrate with Kai Lenny, the youngster from Maui, takes out his win here at the Puerto Escondido Challenge. He's our champion, and he did it handedly right at that end. He's been surfing incredible all day. Your thoughts, Greg? came down to those last minutes. Uh, Grant Baker had a similar exit last year of getting a 10-point ride in the final minutes. Kai came out with the best wave of the heat, and uh, he deserved it. He was right there in the mix all along, and one wave will do it. That was the one that he was patiently waiting for, and uh, happy to see Kai. He's been a standout on the tour uh, every event, and this is the one where it all finally came together for him. From winning Molokai to stand-up champion, I mean, it, I know you really wanted to be a big wave tour champion, and here it is. I can't believe it. You know, I was just taking heat by heat, and I was actually kind of bummed I missed Molokai this year. It was epic conditions. I had the decision to make to come here instead, and, you know, coming here, I didn't want to disappoint myself by losing first heat, and then when I was in the semis, I'm like, God, i got to make my first final, and once I was out there, I started getting waves and felt comfortable, and things sort of fell into place. It was pretty special. Right. Well, I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of people at home watching. Anyone you'd like to thank? Oh, I mean, just my family and friends and my sponsors, really important because they allow me to do what I do. So just super grateful right now. <laughs> well, congratulations, Kai Lenny is the 2017 champion.